So today let's talk about laser welding, laser welding aluminum to be specific. And let me tell you some of the things that they don't tell you. And there's a reason why they don't tell you that. So let's get to the bottom of this. Let's figure out what really needs to happen and what you need to know. So about a year ago, I had a chance to do some laser welding. So apparently this needs to be 230 single face, but 230 hot on one leg and nothing on the other. So not that split face deal that is popular in the US where you have 110 here and 110 here that together make 220. Two, one. So here you hear what it sounds like laser welding. At the end, you see me fighting how to take the wire off. So hold it flat. Is it still working? Huh? Oh, well, I, I stopped it, but I got it back on now. So here the sheet was lifting, but this looks good. Backside, you see a little bit deformation, not really much bleed through. And when you break it, it's so about, this is about 30% penetration right there. I mean, here, here it even bend it a little bit, pulling it apart. I could have moved a little bit slower. So here on this one, I dialed the settings up just a little bit. And you can see I'm still having problems with that wire at the end sticking out. But this one has a little bit bleed through here. But even though on a TIG weld this would be a full weld, here it is not really a full weld. This is about a 50 or 70% weld. So really looks are deceiving with this laser welding. So when you have a laser welder, you're supposed to have like a dedicated room with a door with an interlock switch, which is coming. You need argon or nitrogen. You need a regulator that reads PSI. You need your laser. You need a 230 single phase output, but not the split phase, like a true single phase. That's your wire feeder, your graphite liner, your laser thing. And then you can weld something. If you think that's something you're just gonna pick up and run with it, well, go think again. Eventually you can do it, but for sure, some looks better than others. It doesn't come natural. You're gonna burn a few holes through it. You're gonna get used to all the consumables and stuff. So we'll see. You may also burn a couple holes in your drywall in your designated uh, laser room. Or if you're smart enough to just wear a long sleeve t-shirt, you burn holes in your clothes real easy. The real problem is when you burn holes in your meat, in your flesh, right through the skin, like whatever is under your shirt. Like in this next picture, you're gonna see a hole in the finger. It took three weeks to heal. Now you can ask me how this happened, but I don't know the whole story. I wasn't there. This was the laser operator here. And I said, wear gloves, the thick leather kind ones, wear long sleeves, wear your protective laser glasses, don't do this, don't do that. But I can only preach so much, so this took three weeks to get to that point. And uh, it still wasn't done then, and it was nasty, so there you go. So this here is an aluminum drive belt cover. It looks TIG welded. It is TIG welded. This is the appearance that you can expect from a TIG weld. This is the same drive belt cover laser welded. So this is what it looks like. And the customer says he prefers TIG welding hands down over laser. 
So let's look at this weld again. This is CNC robotic laser welded. That's part of the reason why it looks so nice. I'm not sure that you could do this with a handheld unit. You've seen what my welds look like with a handheld unit after about four or five days of practicing with it. Now granted, there's probably guys that can do this a lot better. But from what I have seen and I have heard and from what I understand, uh, laser is really a CNC operation if you want it done right. You can focus the depth of how deep the laser burns into material. Penetration is always an issue with the laser. Either you have hardly done any or way over penetrated. It's really hard to control all this. It's a whole different skill set that you need to have when you are laser welding. So these here are stainless steel kitchen hoods. Stainless steel polished with a protective lab laser label on there and um, laser cut, CNC press braked, and then laser welded. Again, CNC laser welded, not by hand. Absolutely perfect. There is no, no distortion, no BBs, no nothing. Even the discoloration of the welds is absolutely minimal. You go over this with a little bit of passivation machine and you're good to go. You don't even have to scratch anything, brush anything. For an application like this, where you're building like a gauge thickness material, stainless steel kitchen hood, laser welding is absolutely awesome. But when you weld something thick, or when you weld something aluminum, it's for sure a different skill set. I, I mean, I've seen people weld thicker stainless wood lasers. Um, it can be done. But again, it's a whole different skill set. A lot of welding operators are not really used to it yet. So is laser really the future? One thing is for sure. When you buy a laser, you're going to have hours and hours of training. So enjoy the coming sequences and just watch some training. So the following video here is at double the actual speed plate to you. So it doesn't take forever. If you picture you want to do this yourself, picture everything going half speed. So, enjoy. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.